as the uploading of declared polling unit results to the INEC results viewing portal, IREV, was significantly improved compared to the general 25 polls. 23% of the uh, declared polling unit results were available on IREV by 10 past 6 p.m. on election day. And by 2 o'clock in the afternoon, the following afternoon, that had increased to an average of, of 85%. Um, however, like I said earlier, these things need to be put in the context of the other factors such as violence and, and vote buying. And so the 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 presidential elections of February 25th, like we had said, cast a, a shadow in the minds of people coming out to vote on the 18th of March, uh, diminished trust in the institution, shaping perceptions when it comes to accepting the uh, results that have been returned, particularly in those areas where the margin of victory was, was quite uh, narrow. Um, the institutional performance of INEC was also impacted by increased levels of violent incidents and, and vote trading. So the party deployment of security personnel in places such as Bayelsa, Enugu, Bauchi reduced the ability uh, or willingness of security agents to, to intervene to prevent violent incidents, uh, further undermine the credibility of the, of the poll. Uh, in Bayelsa, as an example, 13 gunmen impersonating security personnel were apprehended by the Operation Delta Safe Nembe JTF Command in Nembe local government area. In the northwest, in Jigawa, observers reported, reported a robust deployment of security agencies. But in places like uh, Ekiti, Eboyi, and Imo, there were minimal deployment until the start of resource collation. Uh, but the presence of security agencies was not always a deterrent to political violence or voter trading, with videos of voter trading taking place in full view of security agents uh, deployed to polls in, in Bauchi, Enugu, and Lagos. In some cases, it was citizens themselves that took measures to protect the ballots, with youth setting up a barricade around a polling unit in Ondo, for instance, in response to attempts by political thugs to disrupt the, the process. Uh, another important institution that will have uh, a, a key role in determining the outcome and credibility of the elections in the weeks ahead is the judiciary. Uh, we post election petitions likely to, to, to be seen in those uh, areas that, uh, in those races that are seen as not too, as too close to call, in places like uh, maybe Kano uh, and, and Enugu, uh, if we, if the Oshun elections are uh, anything to go by, and Rivers as well. Um, so, overall, the, the thinking is that those things that are within the direct control of INEC saw an improvement from uh, February 25 to the March 28 elections. However, uh, the, the March 18 elections. However, those, those uh, gains were countered quite heavily by issues of voter violence and, and vote trading. In terms of uh, violence, voter suppression, voter intimidation, and destruction, of theft, destruction and theft of election materials, predominantly by political party agents and politically aligned thoughts, uh, were recorded across the six geopolitical zones. 10% um, of the observed polling units recorded violence and or fighting. Uh, and this was most, most pronounced in the Northwest, seeing nearly 20% of uh, the, the polling stations we observed recording violence and fighting. Um, 
in the south of, sorry, uh, the Bayosa and Zamfara were the two states that we saw that recorded the most violence um, from our observers. And these, these incidents were often focused on political strongholds of opposition or perceived opponents, which suggests that the use of beavers, which, are, which can limit over voting, has resulted in a more concerted effort to, to stop votes than to try and stop ballot boxes, as used to be the case in the past. Uh, the threat or use of violence, not just offline, but also online, through the use of identity-driven misinformation and, and, and hate speech on social media, uh, um, as well as in some polling units, had an effect of intimidating, suppressing, and, 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 and even destroying election materials in some areas had a, had a multiplier effect on the, on the polls and the way that people accepted the results coming out of the, of the polls. Uh, they also had an effect on, on voters' appetite to go out and, and vote. And this is a reality that is likely to, to, that likely shaped engagement with the process in places like Lagos and Rivers. Um, in the first six hours of polls being opened on, on 18th March, the CDD war room came across a flurry of voter intimidation videos, particularly, particularly from Lagos State, where those, uh, those voter intimidation videos were also laced with rhetoric about belonging and, and ethnic identity, uh, and in, an illustration of the ways that voter intimidation took place both online as well as offline. So before now, uh, a lot of what was, uh, a lot of the hate speech and intimidation going on uh, online were seen as just, you know, the rant of anonymous people taking place online. But we, we started to see some of this being translated into, into uh, real voter intimidation happening at, at polling units. Um, Conventional methods of voter suppression were also recorded by observers, particularly across the Northwest Zone. Uh, it was most apparent in Zanfara, where bandits and, and vigilante groups were reported to have threatened voters with death if they voted for the, for the incumbent. We also saw similar uh, incidents of voter intimidation across all the geopolitical zones, but this these were also mostly pronounced in the southeast, where something like 10% uh, of the polling units we observed saw some element of voter intimidation compared to 4.7% uh, nationwide, uh, with party agents actively involved. In Lagos, for example, voters were told to vote for the incumbent, or they will be flogged in Lagasa and Ado primary schools in Niger local government area. And these political thugs who were working in full glare of the police disrupted and sent back voters intending to vote for other parties. Similar reports were received from Enugu, where in Enugu East LGA, party agents were reported to be directing people on who to vote for, uh, with those unwilling to, to, to vote for uh, their preferred candidate having their ballot papers confiscated and being forced to leave. Um, in Sokoto and Zafar, there were reports of destruction of used ballot papers and vandalization of entire polling units. Uh, in Zafar State's Kaura LGA, when an outcome was close to being determined, Party agents destroyed sensitive materials and cutted away the beaver's machine, despite efforts of the security agents to stop the incidents. Inter-party violent classes, clashes were also recorded in Adamawa and Eboi states, with a PDP agent uh, reportedly shot dead in Amatu town on the local government area of Eboi state, in what was one of the most serious incidents we saw across the, the country. Uh, incidents of election materials being hijacked at gunpoint 
were also recorded in a polling unit in the MOG and local government area of River State, an articulation center in Ogwea LGA in Bayosa. Uh, victims of the violence were, were first and foremost voters, uh, some of whom were denied the, the right and the opportunity to exercise their, their franchise as a result of polling units cancelling results or having their ballot boxes uh, snatched. But there were also attacks directed and threats made towards ad hoc INX <coughs> with one reportedly shot in Cross River and more than 10 kidnapped after voting in Imo State. Uh, journalists reporting on the elections in Lagos, Rivers, and Ogo, domestic election observers and, uh, and, and uh, other party agents um, also had some attacks directed at them. Um, overall, like I said, the, the uh, incidents, the higher incidents of, of election violence had a direct impact on the, the view of the public as to the credibility of the results. In terms of voter trading, uh, vote trading was more pronounced in these elections than in the February 25th elections, with both cash and goods used by all political parties to induce voters. Um, in Anambra State, for instance, party agents were observed using materials, that is cloth materials, phones and other souvenirs to entice voters. In the South-South, multiple party, party agents reported a desire for voters to show proof of their votes before being paid, with party agents reportedly compiling a list of their voters in Essam, central local government area of Edo State. Um, vote trading is not a new feature in Nigeria's subnational electoral process. Um, but it continues to be used when people, when politicians want to induce voters to, to, to vote in a particular way. But it also further demonstrates the often said, the often used cliche that, uh, that politics is local uh, because a lot of the voters predominantly focused on what those they are choosing to elect can provide for them rather than any ideology or, or, or programs of the political parties. Um, vote buying, the violence, and the intimidation that voters experience in casting their votes, and the mistrust that many voters had in the capabilities of INEC following the February 23 elections, despite any improvements this time, cannot be dissociated from the emerging outcomes of the 28th governorship and 36th state house of assembly elections that we had over the last weekend. In analyzing the outcomes, um, we are saying that despite expectations of prompt result declarations, largely stemming from the high rate of results uploaded onto IREV, only 11 out of the 28 governorship elections are declared results by 8 a.m. today, 20th of March. Um, we have also seen, uh, or are likely to see, a greater diversity of political parties, <coughs> both in government houses and in the legislature. So, so you now have uh, uh, parties separate from the, the, the uh, main two parties, the APC and the PDP. You also have uh, parties like the NMPP that are likely to produce a, a governor, uh, the Labour Party that is likely to produce a governor, in addition to AFCA that already has one governor. So we're likely to see a, a greater diversity of political parties in, in government houses across the country, but also in, 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 terms, of, uh, in terms of the legislature both at national and state level. As I said earlier, our initial analysis of the results reinforces the unique nature of local politics. 
and our available results show a correlation between governorship and state house of assembly elections among the, uh, the states that have already been, been declared. And the fact that six from the 11 so far declared have endorsed a governorship candidate from a party different from their uh, presidential preference reiterates the importance of local political dynamics and other such factors in shaping subnational sub uh, sub votes. Uh, greater interest in state politics is also reflected in emerging data. So the turnout for the three states where there's full data shows increases in voter turnout when compared to the presidential elections. So for instance, Aquaibom is showing 27.8% 27, 27 turnout for these last weekend's elections uh, compared to 24.9% for the presidential elections. Jigawa is showing 44.8% for this weekend's elections compared to 40% um, in the February 25th elections. And Kaduna is showing, uh, sorry, Katsina. Katsina is showing 39.4% versus 31.1% in the previous elections. Um, what are then the implications for democracy and development in, in Nigeria? Um, in lieu of more detailed and expansive reports that analyzes the legacy of the elections, we identify six areas that the 2023 governorship elections have contributed to Nigeria's uh, ongoing democratic journey, positively or negatively. The first is that violent conduct around polling units and the collation of results increases the risk of post-election litigation or the prospect of supplementary elections. And this has the added effect of seeing courts have a role in determining um, who is seen to be elected, further undermining the sense that the voters have that their vote is valued and that, the, and that whoever is eventually declared reflects the, the, their choices. Nigeria's identity divisions have been more pronounced in these elections with narrative, narratives amplified by online discourse further contributing to accentuating the, these uh, identity cleavages. Uh, whether to promote conventional zoning arrangements or whip up ethnic concerns to support voter bases, this has played a heightened this has heightened the sensitive political climate that has led to an acronymous, acrimonious <laughs> voting process. It's led to an acrimonious voting process. <laughs> um, an instance of systematic disenfranchisement on the basis of ethnicity and the expectation that will and the expectation that will translate into votes for another party will also lead to more partisanship and division in incoming administrations. Um, yeah, we, we, we've, it's also highlighted an, in, an interesting factor for us, which is to question the continued uh, relevance and dominance of political parties in our political system. So it raises the question whether political parties are becoming less relevant uh, with voters largely making their choices about who to vote for based on personalities and the abilities of those, uh, pers the perceived abilities of those personalities to, to deliver. Uh, the failure of outgoing governors in Taraba, Abia, Enugu, Plateau, Cross River, and Benue to win senatorial seats despite in some cases, the party winning the other senatorial seats in the state suggests that voters' decisions are linked to the performance of the individuals rather than the parties. Um, and this, you know, not, none of these parties have particularly strong ideologies that they are there to in Nigeria. Similarly, re-election of governors from parties other than those supported for president 
uh, speaks to increase perceptions of competence and personality over uh, political party platforms. Thirdly, this resource should provide momentum for those that want to see more political party platform alternatives to the dominant APC and PDP. Uh, the success of candidates who have left the party and been able to gain political influence could encourage more splintering and eventual weakening and, and balkanization of the major parties. Uh, the performance of elected governors and officials during the coming term will play a, a, a part in maintaining this momentum. Uh, while there has been uh, marked progress in, a, in, a, in election administration, there also, there are also needs for more resilient and adaptive administration mechanisms to enable the electoral process to build more accountable and, and transparent governance structures. Uh, ultimately, these elections have shown an electoral environment where violence remains at the fore and where uh, there is citizen uncertainty about the ability of the Electoral Commission to ensure that the ballots they cast are reflected in the results that are announced. This is reflected in diminished engagement in these elections mostly through reduced voter turnout in a number of areas as compared to previous election cycles. Uh, regrettably, it reduces the popular mandate of the candidates and parties elected and can further erode trust in their ability to be accountable to all citizens in their states or constituency. It is why stakeholders in the electoral process must work together to ensure solutions are preferred uh, to, to ensure sustainable development in the electoral processes. Because no matter how much INEC uh, improves, if the state does not do more to tackle uh, security, to tackle violence, to tackle thuggery, uh, to tackle misinformation, violence, rhetoric, and hate speech, um, then whatever improvements are made in election administration itself, will have a limited effect in reassuring voters that uh, their, their votes can actually count. So we believe that uh, the government should do more to provide the environment, uh, the, the, the electoral environment, uh, those things that are not within our next direct control, uh, because doing so will help to ensure that uh, the elections are seen to be more credible than, than they have been so far. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you very much. I think one point uh, that uh, Dr. Judy mentioned as part of our implication is the fact that despite the incorporation of technological innovation as the Libras and the IREC, they have not actually proven to be the silver bullet that we have actually envisaged it to be. And there is a need to actually become more resilient and adaptive um, to build more accountable and transparent governance structures uh, to make such innovation as this uh, effective. And I think just to add that some of the interesting things that came up is that there are regional statistics in all of these elections itself. So when you look at the late arrival of um, materials, you find that it's more prevalent in the southeastern part of the country where you have the beavers malfunctioning more higher prevalent in the northwestern part of the country. Uh, more fighting witnessed in the northwest of the country, but vote buying was higher in the southeast of Nigeria. At the same time, intimidation was more observed in the southeast and the south-south part of the country uh, itself. And the huge the most impacted by low deployment of security personnel, again, was in the southeastern part of the country. And these regional dynamics are quite clear and very important in terms of understanding the framing and the outcome of some of these um, elections. But I'm sure we would, uh, again, update our analysis and make it available. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um,
Thank you very much. I just want to add that um, it is very clear from this report um, that the, um, the center you know, um, uh, is presented today. There's a huge implication for impunity uh, associated with violence. First, uh, as a result of um, growing violence in the country, you could see that the voter turnout is diminishing, meaning that more people will not be participating in the process. The implication is that there will not be accountability when there's no popular participation by the citizens to hold their elected official to account. Uh, that's a very, very serious um, uh, deficit in our efforts to consolidate democracy. We must not reward impunity and violence to people who have you know, grossly uh, violated the law. Secondly, uh, it's very clear as a way of minimizing the cost of violence, electoral violence in this country, mm -hmm. we still need to revisit the demand of civil society to establish an uh, electoral offenses commission. Because the way things are going now, if you don't have that you know, commission to deal with you know, uh, electoral offenses at various tiers of government, you would just you know, be being with aggressive. Because a state attorney general you know, will be the only person, if he likes, to present any electoral offenses to the court. If he does not or she does not you know, take interest in that, it means that people will continue to perpetrate electoral offenses and they get away with it. The third you know, implication for our democratic consolidation is this commercialization of the vote. Uh, we have seen in many places openly, despite the effort of the EFCC and ICPC to minimize the vote trading, it has been seen happening everywhere, which means that the credibility and the legitimacy of whatever you know, uh, outcome that is coming in many places where election holds, it is not born out of the fact that people really wanted to vote or they are voting based on their conscience. But some wicked people are taking advantage of the miserable poverty they created for the citizens to be inducing them with as small as 2,000 Naira. That is a very, very serious uh, issue that we need to, as a nation, to begin to focus on dealing with even self-respect, self, you know, um, dignity, because this has a really, really implication. If the politician they noted that the only way they can, you know, do this is to continue to impoverish and create artificial poverty, so that people will not be looking for that uh, two thousand era, then definitely we will have a huge deficit in our democratic accountability in Nigeria. So I think um, uh, CDD is going to come up with more detailed report showing you know, um, the implication and so many uh, aspects that can help to improve our electoral process. Of course, the use of the technology, even though not as we said, but despite that, it has helped to minimize the monumental rigging in the past, we'll be hearing 3 million, 2 million. This time around with the technology, it is almost difficult for you to pronounce that figure. So I think we want to continue to advocate for the consolidation of the use of technology. You recall some politicians, they oppose vehemently the use of technology because they know what they wanted to do. So I think the nation should determine to make sure that the use of technology in our electoral process must continue to happen, it must continue to be the realistic in which we can actually conduct you know, free, fair, and credible election. I just want to add this. Thank you. Questions? Questions? Mr. Uh, the floor is now open for questions. So if you have any questions, just communicate right? and then we'll take them. All right. Is there another one? So I'll put them together. Okay. We'll take this to Good morning. My name is Luminos, General Duty for Vanguard. Um, on the sidelines of the election, 
on Saturday with sorts of political act actors and uh, their agents you know, taking to social media to issue stay money uh, to people of certain um, ethnic extraction, you know, to steer clear of uh, politics in certain regions. Um, so even personalized the election as being an ethnic contest it should be for people of this particular race, um, um, ethnicity. So I want to know, uh, even though some of us are aware of what this could pertain for our democracy, I want to know what CDD's position is. What? CDD's position is on such kind of uh, demagogues. Thank you. Okay, we'll take a second one from there. Um, good morning. My name is Lara Ba Mori. I report for the Amidon Kara. Um, of the 10.8% uh, of uh, violence recorded uh, at the time of this analysis, is there any breakdown into uh, which gender is most um, affected? Thank you. Okay, those are two for now. So yeah, on, on, on the first question, definitely CDD is categorically opposed to that development. And we are very, very much concerned. In fact, those who were here on, on Friday, I think, in my closing remarks, I made direct reference to this. And our own position is that, in fact, the going beyond what uh, our, as I said about the Electoral Offenses Commission, we should borrow a leave from Kenya, where after the okay. post election violence in 2007 2008, they set up a national, a, a, a national commission for integration and cohesion, which criminalizes the use of hate speech. I think we, we need to fight vigorously for that. Otherwise, we will be going on, on a descent down into, into, the, into the library. I think also, as we said on Friday, the press also have a duty not to pro provide a platform for prominent politicians who want to, to uh, inflame hate speech. I was worried because prominent, uh, main, even mainstream platforms offering politicians a platform to, 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 to profile ethnic groups. And I think that, that should be discouraged. That is not just a matter, of, that, that is a limit to free speech. Free speech is not absolute. And when the press encourages and provides platform for prominent politicians, including even governors, to use their privileged position in complete disregard of their oath of office to promote a speech, then what do you expect? So I think our politicians are to blame for criminalizing uh, politics. And in this particular case, hate speech. And I think the press has a role to keep on happening on this and not just providing platforms for politicians who want to pursue a personal agenda, but the guys in form of, 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 of standing up for either a region, a zone, or an ethnic group. So uh, I don't know who would like to speak on uh, the second question. Yeah. <laughs> we, are, we are yet to finish the disaggregation of these um, data assets, but I'm sure it will be in our, in our report. But of course, we got a lot of uh, incidences of women being attacked or flogged at the pulling unit. I think in Lagos, in Kano, uh, in Kano, uh, across, I think maybe in Bauchu too. So we saw this across the country where women were actually flogged either for wanting to vote for a party or collecting money to vote, or even in terms of association with a particular party and they are voting in opposition stronghold, then they are being, they were attempt to preclude some of them from participating uh, in, this, uh, in these elections. And I think to add to what Prof have also said, one thing we are also very uh, keen about and we are working to see happens is the role the social media also plays in promoting hate speech and disinformation. And you will see from our analysis that we acknowledge the fact that in the first six hours, there were attempts 
to actually intimidate voters with videos, most of which shared online and on closed platforms, messaging platforms such as WhatsApp, which is basically to intimidate them. In most of those instances, we reported the handling. And I think, and we reported uh, to social media platforms, even some were third party partners, or because of the work our uh, election war room, social media war room does, took it upon ourselves, but there is a need for advocacy for them to lower the standard when it comes to reporting in countries like Nigeria. Um, thank you. Okay, question here. Yes, question. Yes, from the Trust. Uh, I want to use the uh, opportunity of the panelists being here to make their opinion known. Uh, as for twistness in the February 25 election, and to a lower extent on Saturday, that Udlon deliberately orchestrated violence in some polling units uh, where the opposition was stronger, knowing fully well that if the violence was widespread, the electoral officer doesn't have option and to cancel the election so as to reduce the view cost of their opponent. Uh, this thing was not properly captured in the Electoral Act, as it, it did take the commission to study section 65 of the Electoral Act to either order a, a supplementary election in some cases if the number is significant enough to affect the margin of the figures. So, what's the opinion in this particular as the nation prepare for? Rigorous electoral tribunal post governorship election. Thank you. Well, the, 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 the answer is a simple one. I think Nigerians must be prepared to stand up to those who deliberately set out to destroy the electoral process. We know them, but we sit back and do as if it is the role for the police alone to prevent them. In other places, I've witnessed in Zambia, I've witnessed. In, 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 in Accra. Citizens who form themselves into into uh, into what my colleague uh, night watchman night watchman deliberately starting out to prevent that kind of thing happening because they say that if we can protect ourselves from thieves at night, we build gates and so on and so because the state has failed to, to, to defend that to guarantee our property to us. What more can be more important? There are people organizing themselves on election day to prevent their dogs, to prevent, to prevent uh, party hacks from the little section up. You know them and you can stop them. And I think we have that role. We should not leave everything to government alone. If government fails us and we cannot sleep well at night and we, we form ourselves in the vigilante group to, prevent, to, 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 to protect our property, then we could also do so to protect our votes and prevent these people from doing what they are doing. And then we have that responsibility. Political parties have failed. They will not change the law that will disadvantage them. So it is our own role as citizens, because the, 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 the price of democracy is eternal vigilance. So all this passing the book, passing the book, I think Nigerians should stop and then rise up against those who are trying to, to do this. And that is the answer. That is the answer. And, and, and I think that if you had that in our report, we made reference to one of such examples in you know, those days where people well, actually in in Cameroon, Cameroon. Cameroon. yeah, where people followed the ballots or where people actually mounted the post to prevent political talks from coming in. But I think the increased violence is also as a result of the diversity and revolution itself, which calls for new ways of rigging the uh, rigging the post. Yeah compared to the previous use of incident form or ballot box uh, stopping. Uh, in this era where politicians at every point in time, once new rules are made, they try to look for ways of actually circumventing it in ways that actually favor us them. And I think uh, one, that is why we have witnessed increased violence in this election, <coughs> but also to note that in all, in previous subnational elections also, in previous electoral cycle, this has also been like uh, a trend that I continue to uphold um, in this. But it makes for rooms, especially speaking about the margin of elite principles, and we need to actually look more into the law 
and how to deal with some of these. But we cannot legislate away everything. We need to see the law in books and the law in actions uh, happening in this country. Thank you. <coughs> Okay, thank you, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you will agree with me that our analysts at the CTD EAC have actually done a human's job and deserve a resounding round of applause. That applause doesn't seem to be resounding enough. <laughs> All right, uh, I also want to recognize my colleagues at the CDD. Uh, who have been working around the clock to ensure this whole process uh, goes on well. Please, they also deserve a resounding round of applause. And finally, finally, our media friends, uh, they have given us all the coverage we need. They also deserve a resounding round of applause. And thank you so much for coming. The statement will be circulated to you later. Is there anything? The state of the circulation later today. In the next hour or so. Either to your email so you can wait and collect collect it. <laughs>